In 1775, the Continental Congress created the Chaplain Corps. Under the command of General George Washington, each soldier was required to attend worship service every Sunday. While other armies advanced on their feet, Washington's troops advanced on their knees. It's time for the Chaplain's Report with Caleb Colquitt on tactics. Chaplain's Report today does come from the book of Daniel, and we're winding down. In fact, I believe we have one more lesson on Daniel, and then that's it. That's the end of the book. So we're in Daniel chapter 12. And just to set the table a little bit, you remember that Daniel has been receiving prophecy. And he's having the prophecy explained to him. He's having the, the rationale and the meaning explained to him. But you'll also recall, if you were watching the episode yesterday, that there are certain parts of this that Daniel is still having trouble comprehending and still doesn't really fully understand. And you'll remember that we talked about the purpose, the purpose of prophecy being in large part for people not when the prophecy is made, but for after the prophecy is fulfilled. Which, by the way, would make sense. Because where the prophecies were, for, for Jesus, for example... Were those prophecies for the edification of people that were reading them at the time? Sure, they were. That helped. And it also gave them an idea of what to look for in Jesus. But the vast majority of them didn't. The vast majority of them saw the prophecies of Jesus being fulfilled and still didn't 100% get it. Even the apostles didn't completely understand that he was the Messiah right away. It took them time of staying with him and, and start slowly putting some pieces together and even they were very skeptical of the resurrection. And so the prophecy is written for the edification and the help of people at the time that they're written. But as we learned yesterday from Daniel, they're really primarily for people that are living after the prophecy has been fulfilled so that they can look back and see, oh, it, it all does line up. There's a message here and it's consistent. And that also helps us strengthen our faith by looking at the authority of those that were writing it. So we'll go ahead and look at Daniel chapter 12, verses 6 through 10. And one said to the man dressed in linen, who was above the waters of the river, How long will it be until the end of these wonders? I heard the man dressed in linen, who was above the waters of the river, as he raised his right hand and his left towards heaven, and swore by him who lives forever, that it would be for a time, times, and half a time. And as soon as they finish shattering the power of the holy people, all these events will be completed. As for me, I heard, but could not understand. So I said, My Lord, what will the outcome of these events? What will be the outcome of these events? He said, Go your way, Daniel, for these words are concealed and sealed up until the end of time. Many will be purged, purified, and refined. But the wicked will act wickedly, and none of the wicked will understand. But those who have insight will understand. A couple of really key points in that passage of Scripture. Honestly, this passage makes me feel a lot better about myself. And the reason, I know that's not really the point of the Scripture, but the reason that it does so is because Daniel's saying, I'm having a hard time grasping this. And he's the guy that received the prophecy and wrote it. And even Daniel is saying, I don't really fully comprehend everything. Which, by the way, goes with the lesson that we were learning yesterday. That prophecy is important, and it does help the people that it actually receive it in the time that it's given. But it's primarily for those that are seeing it afterward, and that makes sense because with the advantage of hindsight, you can look back and see God's plan unfolding. For example, if you read the book of Esther only until the first few chapters, you wouldn't really see God's providence. You wouldn't see how God placed everybody in exactly the right spot in the way that he wanted them to. It's only with the advantage of hindsight that you can look back and say, ah, I see what God was doing there. And so while Daniel is benefiting from having this prophecy, even he doesn't understand all of it, which makes me feel better because there are times where I'm not sure that I understand all of it. And that's just the thing. God obviously gave us these prophecies for our benefit, and they do edify us. But we can never know every single thing about them. 
I mean, we're looking at a document that was written by an all-powerful, all-knowing creator. Do we really think that we can understand every aspect of it? It's impossible. And in prophecy specifically, Daniel doesn't understand all of the symbolism. He doesn't understand what the outcome is going to be. And you'll notice that his response to this is, go your way, do what I told you to do, write the prophecy down, seal it up, pass it on to other people. Daniel was given the prophecy, but he wasn't told exactly what's going to happen. He wasn't given a play-by-play. -play. He wasn't given names and addresses and exactly where this will happen and where this will happen. Now, there are prophecies that we've looked at through this study that have shown that sometimes the prophecies got a little more specific. But with this one, he's saying, trust me, it is going to be beneficial. You're going to want to have a record of this, and it's going to help future generations. But you're not supposed to understand every aspect of it. And so there, there is a divine mystery in play here with Daniel. And I think Daniel understands that and, and knows that this is the task that he's been given, and he has been adequately equipped for the task that God has set out for him. But you'll also notice that he is giving him some reassurance here in voice 9 and 10, because he says many will be purified or purged, purified and refined, but the wicked will act wickedly, and none of the wicked will understand, but those who have insight will understand. So what God is saying is when these events play out, when they take place, what is going to happen is the wicked are going to be befuddled, but those with insight that see everything coming, that understand what the prophecies mean, and in this particular prophecy, we see some of it playing out in 70 AD with the ransacking of the temple, and we'll talk a little bit more about that tomorrow. But we're seeing that God is saying, ultimately what this means is, I win. Now, that's an oversimplification, sure. But he's saying, Daniel, the important thing that you need to understand about this prophecy is that the people that obey, obey me, the people that do righteously, the people that seek my face and obey my will, they'll be okay. And yeah, it's really important to understand every aspect of the prophecy that we can. It's important to get as much spiritual wisdom out of it as we can. But ultimately, we need to follow this example. We need to follow this passage. That the most important thing that we can understand is that those who do what God asked them to do are going to be protected by God. And those who are determined to do evil are going to be befuddled and lost. And that's true in times of prophecy being fulfilled or in our everyday life. And that is a takeaway that we should be observing and applying to our own lives and actions from the book of Daniel. Stay the course, friends. Just in case you were wondering, yes, I am a straight white Christian male and a small government constitutionalist, which means I have no chance of getting any help from the government and wouldn't accept their help even if they offered. Which means I'm going to need you to like and subscribe because my gun collection is not going to pay for itself.